So yeah, my slides will be in my Power Apps uh, presentation there, but just a little bit about myself. I'm Matthew Devaney, and uh, you know, recently there have been some pretty positive changes in my life um, since the last time I've been on this call. Uh, became a Power Apps MVP in Biz Apps, so that was pretty cool. Got this awesome, pretty cool Power Apps T-shirt, and recently I started a brand new job at Hitachi Solutions as a Power Apps developer and consultant. So I just want to say, uh, one year ago, Todd and Chuck invited me onto this call and and had a little bit of faith in me and my abilities. And they're kind of the people who gave me my start here. So um, yeah, I just want to say thanks to Chuck and Todd for being such a great influence. Absolutely, and, that's a cool you know, story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So now I'm gonna put the slides up and we are gonna talk about components. So used to be an accountant, now a developer. Instead of asking myself each and every day, what does it take to be a great accountant? I asked myself, what does it take to be a great Power Apps? developer. And so the most scarce resource in any job is time, right? You never have enough time to do anything. So you have to learn how to manage your time effectively and be pretty efficient. So what you want to do is if you've gone ahead and solved a problem, you've solved a problem in the past, you want to remain solved in the future and hopefully use that solution again and again and again. And so how do we do this as developers? Well, some of us like to keep a OneNote on the side with you know, a few code snippets to kind of plug in here or there. Some of us like me have a huge library of POC apps, proof of concept apps. Um, I have about 50 of them, which you can just kind of, you know, take code out of and any give it time. But probably the best way to go about this is to build components. So components are just like building a really small section of your app that you can copy and paste and reuse again and again and again in different scenarios. So the fastest way to solve a problem is basically just to do what you did in the past. You want to copy what you did or you know, copy what someone else did, give them credit, and then paste it. Good developers copy, great developers paste. Here's an example of a component uh, I've made to do just that. So in pretty much every app that I've ever made, there's been some type of approvals process to it. Uh, Vivek just actually showed us an approvals process too, but there's no you know, visualization of that in Power Apps. You have to go ahead and build it for yourself. And you know, to do that, it takes about you know, two or three hours, two hours to build it, one to kind of vet it out and perfect it. And you don't want to do that again and again. So what I've done is I've made a little component here that shows you, you know, the process here starts with a guy named Eric Erickson. You can give him a title and it goes on to Sally Summers. Think of this as an approvals process, who's a supervisor and then it goes to me. I give myself the title of manager and uh, so on and so forth. And as you go through the process, you can get a little check or a little X to show if something's been accepted or rejected. And the current person in the process has a little orange circle around them. So to show you how this works, I'm just going to go to the next screen here. So this is an IT requests form. It's nothing more than a, you know, a simple form in Power Apps. And as a person working at a company, you can go ahead and request a desktop PC for a thousand bucks, write a comment. I want it really bad. And when I click the submit button here, you'll see that I've sent it forward to the next person, Sarah Green, who's the manager. There's a little checkbox here. And now I'm acting as Sarah Green. Do I want to approve it, reject it? I click approve. And as David Johnson, the IT manager, I'm going to reject it. And so check, check, uh, X. So that would have taken a really long time to build if I had done it from scratch. But just implementing a component, it took about, I don't know, maybe about 10, 15 minutes to get this functionality in there. And for those who want to download this component, I am going to throw a little link in the chat. Uh, that's right, you guys can have it there for free, no charge. So what I'd like to do with the, the remaining minutes in this call is just to show everybody um, how you can go ahead and build a very basic component for yourself. And so I was thinking, what would I like to show the group today? What should we do here? And you know, one of the things I really feel is missing from Power Apps is a time picker component. We use dates all the time. And, and you know, time's pretty common too. We've got a date picker, but we don't got a time picker. So how this particular component works that we're going to build today is, you, you know, you click on this little text input right here, a little time picker shows up. You can go up, down, scroll up and down, pick a particular time, and it shows up in the text box. So the really nice thing is that this is mobile uh, friendly too, right? It doesn't use drop downs. You can scroll up and down with your thumb. Works really, really great in the iPad. What do you think of that, Chuck and Todd? Are you excited to build a little bit of this today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, let's do it to it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and I'm going to go to the component section of Power Apps. 
It should only take about uh, you know five minutes or, or so to get the basic functionality down. So all I've done in advance for this presentation was I clicked on this little new component button to put a new component that's set on the screen. And then I made a label inside here uh, and gave it a nice black border to show where the boundaries of our component are. So I just thought that would speed things up a little. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the hours into the component using a gallery. So I will create a blank vertical gallery here, position it very nicely on the page, give the gallery a nice uh, title. Your, your controls is very important. And then we're simply going to make it you know, a third of the width because we have to count for hours and minutes and AM slash uh, PM. Maybe we'll make it transparent too. That's great. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to load this with values for the hours. So we're going to write a little a sequence function here. If you haven't used sequence before, uh, it's awesome. You can automatically create a sequence of numbers just programmatically, right? Who wants to type out 1 through 12 when we can do have Power Apps do that for us? And we're going to do a little bit of formatting so we have a leading zero. Uh, next, we're actually going to show this inside of the gallery show these numbers to prove that the sequence function worked so i'll throw a label in there and hey what do you know it pops up now we got the numbers one through 12. uh really got to thank the power apps team for this one like i absolutely love the sequence function and it saved me so much time so if anyone's on the call who helped build that today thank you thank you thank you okay so now we got our numbers in here so let's do some quick styling if we want this to be reused in multiple places, we ought to give the person who's putting it into the app, you know, a way to control that, right? We ought to give them properties that they can they, they can use. So we can build our own custom property by clicking on the component, going over here, clicking the plus button, and I want to create two properties, one called selected fill to show the background color when I've clicked something. And we can actually use a data type of color, which is pretty nifty. And then we want to do selected color and pick a color here as well. So once I've created my properties, I come over here to the left hand side and I can start to fill these in. So my color is gonna be white when it's selected. My fill is gonna be a nice little dodge or blue. Awesome. And now if we just update that inside the label as well, might need a little bit of code here. So we wanna say, if uh, this item uh, dot is selected, <laughs> take a look at the time picker and that nifty property that we just put together. Otherwise, make it transparent. Great. So now this is blue because we've clicked on it. And I can do a quick copy and paste over to the color right here. There we go. And it should probably be black otherwise. There we go. Nifty. First little bit of functionality. Uh, because we you know, set this up the way we did, I can actually just really quickly copy and paste to get the, the minutes and the, and the hours. So let's do that. So I'll just put this one over here to the, the left. I'll rename this minutes. There we go. Click on it. Um, so there's 60 minutes in an hour, so I'm probably going to want to type 60 there and value minus one so we can start at zero zero perfect we got the minutes uh, i noticed that i have a capital i in here don't want to rename things that are weird there we go and finally to get the uh, am and pm i can probably just type it like this there we go so we've got the basics of our of our little time picker right here i think the last thing i'm going to do is hide the scroll bar because like using this little visual design principle that it, you know the number's only half showing, the user's going to be able to know that they should scroll up and down, so that way they don't even have to think about using the scroll bar. Uh, so with the remaining uh, two minutes here, um, the last thing that we want to do is we want to output something, right? Because um, we don't want the time value to be trapped inside this component. We actually want it to be displayed in the text box, which is not part of it. So last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my my time picker again, I'm going to create a new property called, well, I'm going to pick the date and time type first, and I'm just going to call it value. 
right? We want to call it something the user's used to, and they're always using dot value, you know, everywhere in Power Apps. For this section, I want to set the time when the user clicks on something, right? Selects a new value. And yeah, my apologies, but I'm going to copy and paste some code in here because it's a little bit lengthy, but all that it really says, let's just make sure this is picking stuff up. Gallery, time picker, hours. There we go. It's because I had that funny looking capital I. So all it's really saying here is put the time in a variable when the user clicks on something, and by the way, you get the matches for the time. So if uh, so with the so what we do here finally is we had that value property and uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, very time value. There we go. We had a variable there called very time value. I just copied it. What is happening? Perhaps. Okay, so the the problem that I had actually set this value here to an input property. And so the reason it wasn't finding that that variable when we went ahead and clicked these these gallery items is because, well, it's an input property. You can't find something inside the component. That makes absolutely less than no sense. Right, Chuck? I, I, I won't argue the sense, but I certainly run into the problem. I've done that exact yeah. problem before. So there so you go. So all I have to do is go like this, change it to output, click save. Oh, the error went away. That's awesome. <laughs> woo so, now, woo. so now if I go back to my screen right here, when I want to go and use the component, I can just you know, throw it onto the screen here like this. And if I want to say put it in a label or a text box like the value uh, from that, I can simply reference it like so. There you go. And I just have to throw a little bit of um, adding at it uh, time. <laughs> All right, well. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks everybody for for following along with me uh, here. Just want to say, uh, yeah, I plan to put this uh, time picker out as a component on the community gallery as well as a date picker as well. So if you enjoy it, just uh, make sure to go follow me on Twitter. And sometime next week, I'll post it. And thanks for having me once again, Chuck Dodd. Thanks. Really awesome demo there. I love how you're coding on the fly. It demonstrates how fast you really can build up a component. Thanks, David. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you.